everyone, today's tutorial is for my people in the Southern Hemisphere. It's getting pretty chilly in Australia and I'm in the mood for a dark lip. Also applicable for those of you across the pond, if you don't necessarily subscribe to spring seasonal trends. We are glossing over the skin today because it's exactly the same as it was in my last video. A bold brow looks awesome when paired with a dark lip, but I wanted this look to be rather casual and effortless. So I went with a My Brow But Better by just following the natural shape of my brow and only filling in the sparse spots. I'm prepping the lips early on so that they're in decent condition uh, for our dark lip. I have chronically dry lips and my favorite balm is the Nux Rev de Mil. I'm so Australian, I probably butchered that. Anyway, it's a lifesaver for me. If I apply it before bed, it's still there in the morning, so I highly recommend it. Onto the eyes, we are going in with MAC Taylor Grey Paint Pot. Greys are not the most flattering colour on me, but this one is a warm taupey grey, so I feel like I can pull it off. I'm pressing the product onto the mobile lid with a finger. Now MAC paint pots are a bit drier in texture, so picking up some product on a crease brush to blend it through the crease. I find that it's easier to blend with a brush as opposed to trying to do it all with your fingers. Also blending that product onto the lower lash line. I use my fingers a lot in this tutorial. They're fantastic tools, what can I say? And this need not be neat, just get it on there. Oh hi, it's the Urban Decay Naked 2. I am taking the shade Tease, which is a matte elephanty gray. It's actually quite a similar shade to the paint pot. We're using this shadow to diffuse the edges of the paint pot and add some more depth to the crease. Now I was late to jump onto the Naked 2 bandwagon, but much to my surprise, I think it might be my favorite Naked palette. I feel as though the shades are a little bit more versatile, maybe, when compared to the other two palettes. I don't know, but I am a fan. Looking kind of sheepish here because I'm using a limited edition product. Wah, sorry guys. This is Tom Ford Platinum Cream Eyeshadow. I practically had to sell my soul to acquire this. It is impossible to find. When new shades hit the counter, I would highly recommend trying one. The Tom Ford Cream Eyeshadows lends that glossy lid effect, which we see a lot in editorial shoots, but they wear really well and they don't crease, which I think is rather unique. That being said, any shimmery taupe eyeshadow will work here. I'm pushing the product onto the mobile lid and along the lower lash line using, you guessed it, my fingers again. Guys, guess what? I purchased some Wayne Goss brushes. This is the number six. I'm using a mix of Tees and Busted, again from the Naked 2, to further define the crease and the outer corners of the eye. Now Busted has a shimmer finish and I wouldn't normally use shimmer in the crease, but that transition from glossy lid to matte brow bone calls for a little bit of shimmer, I think. Back to the Wayne Goss brushes. I expected to have dupes in my stash, but actually I have no close substitutes. So it looks promising, but I will play around a little bit more and I'll let you know my thoughts in a few weeks. For the lower lash line, I'm experimenting with a new placement. Using the pointed part of the number six brush, I am sketching a line a few millimeters below my natural lash line. So creating a new lash line, so to speak. This gives the illusion of a slightly bigger eye, but it also lends that grungy, heavy lower lash line sort of look. And I like to pair a dark lip with some grungy elements. Here we have Tom Ford Escapade. Any apricot shimmer eyeshadow will do. I'm highlighting the tear ducts and apparently I suck at filming and this is really hard to see but I'm running that highlight in the void that we created when sketching out our grungy lower lash line. Again, it makes the eye look much bigger. Giving the lashes a really strong curl, we're not using any falsies today. Then tight lining the upper lashes to ground the look and give it some more intensity. You guys know that I love the Rouge Bunny Rouge pencils and the Pixie eye pencils for tight lining. 
This eyeliner by NARS is a new discovery for me and it's also fantastic because it doesn't smear or migrate. For my slightly grungy eye, I envisioned a really overloaded lash, even slightly clumpy. I think it pairs really well, but it's not to everyone's taste, so you can omit this if you prefer. My favorite mascara for that overloaded look is the Jordana Best Lash Extreme. Fantastic budget buy for dramatic lashes. I gave false lashes a miss today. I think falsies tend to look quite glamorous and I wanted something that looked more lived in, I guess. So I'm loading the mascara on both the upper and the lower lashes to the point where it looks a little bit spidery and overloaded. I chose to add a nude eyeliner to the lower waterline, mostly because my eyes appear perpetually irritated and tired and it's the bane of my existence. Grunge and gaunt I think seem to go hand in hand. It's very 90s heroin chic. I'm using Illamasqua Hollow, which I purchased actually based on your recommendations from my top contours video. So thank you. You guys know me very well, obviously. I love it, great ashy contour. I'm using a very small brush to really hollow out the cheekbones and then blending upwards using soft circular motions. I'm also running some of that contour directly under the jawline and under the chin uh, just to negate the slightly double chin effect. On to the lips. Here we have one of my all time favorite lip palettes. I'm using a NARS shade with a Wayne Goss number no. seven brush. And to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of this brush for lip product. I found it a little bit stiff and it applied the product a little bit patchy. But I'm really working the product into the lip to create a long lasting stain. This shade wasn't as dark or as purpled as the picture that I had in my head. So I went back in with some MAC Cyber and blended that over the top. I rarely wear Cyber alone, but I keep it around for this very purpose to deepen other lipsticks. Now, if you feel as though dark lips can overwhelm your face and the prospect is kind of scary to you, you can blot the color down to a stain and keep the lip line very diffused and blurry as I have done right here. It's a softer and more wearable way to pull off a dark lip and it's also a good tip if you have slightly smaller lips. If you are a sucker for drama, however, you can carve out the lip line for a crisp, high impact lip. I'm using my brand new MAC Night Moth Lip Liner, which is an awesome deep purple shade. Just a heads up, your lips ought to be in better condition than mine for this product because it is so matte and it will catch on every single dry patch. I still love it, I can't lie. So I'm lining the lip line and then feathering the product inwards and then blending it even more with a lip brush. This might seem like a lot of work, but the more you blend, the more evenly the lip will wear. And I think that that's really crucial for bolder lip shades. One last step if you want your dark lip to look perfectly crisp and clean, running a concealer around the lip line. I rarely do this because much lazy, but here I am. Good job, Karima. Where's my medal? Here we have our final look. So some light grungy elements with overloaded lashes. We also have some contrast with texture, the glossy eyes against the super matte lips. This was so much fun to create and I hope it was fun to watch. Until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will speak to you very soon. Bye-bye.